Hello YouTube. In this video, we're going to talk about the sort of tools you need to keep aboard a small boat. Tools. My primary tool needs can be split into three categories. Emergency or often needed, and therefore quick to hand. Electrical and general, and then engine and mechanical. So let's start with the first category, easy to hand. So in this easily accessible locker, I keep a few tools which are easy to hand. When faced with an immediate need, having access to a basic tool set saves the hassle of removing cushions and digging around in lockers. Anything that gets regular use gets put in the bag. All common sense stuff like the most popular size of screwdrivers, pliers and spanners. This bag's carried the same core tools across the last four boats I've owned with only minor changes for the specific vessel. On this boat, our Rutgerson deck gear uses Torx drive bolts, so this handy set is the only item that's unique to confidence. Measuring tools to check sizing before a run to the chandlers are a must, and the cheap vernier calipers are perfect to check the diameter of rope or pipe, and being made of plastic, it doesn't corrode in the harsh marine environment. My Stanley knife is also plastic, and this one's been part of the kit for 15 years. Not sure the metal-bodied version would still be looking this pristine. Another item that gets a fair bit of immediate use is this mains tester for the blue Seaform 16 amp 3 pin plugs that are the standard power outlet for UK marinas. When you plug into the shore power and the lights stay off, the first thing to check is your fuses, but the second thing to test is the marina outlet. And this not only tests that the power is on, but also that the wiring is correct and therefore safe for you and your boat. Of course, just because the marina socket is wired correctly doesn't guarantee your boat's wiring is the same, or that because the shore power is on that you haven't blown a fuse inside your vessel, so I have a similar tester for internal main circuits. Of course, most of the circuits on a small boat are 12 volt, so a multimeter and some nice long test leads are also in that same easy to get to locker. So in the easiest and most accessible locker, I keep the small hand tools, which are quite often just enough to get the job done. Of course, there's no avoiding the delving into lockers and moving of cushions when it comes down to the bigger stuff. That just has to go in a suitable locker, really. And this is the suitable locker. And this one is the electrical and general box. Unsurprisingly, in the toolbox, there's a wider choice of common tools. But there's also a few not-so-common items that are must-haves on a boat. First, there's a set of rods for pulling wires through the darkest recesses of your hull. Then there's these hose clamp pliers, which firmly grip rubber tubing, helping the twisting on or off of pipes onto fittings. A roll of self-amalgamating tape is also included. This waterproof rubber tape is for sealing joints and insulating electrical connections from the ingress of water and damp, salty air. And this long-handled nut runner is perfect for undoing those out-of-reach hose clips. The trigger opens and closes the socket to allow easy fitting when at arm's length. Of course, there's my trusty tub of Vaseline for wiping on tools to prevent rust, a roll of PTFE tape for sealing up fittings, and finally, a paint pen to allow writing on and marking up metal fittings or parts. Next, we move on to mechanical and engine. Apart from the expected range of sockets and spanners and Allen and Torx wrenches, we have three sets of pump pliers, because for many jobs you need two pairs of these. There are oil filter pliers for removing engine filters. I have two types and the tools are selected based on best fit for the task in hand. Then there's an impeller extractor. This set was bought when I had a boat with a bigger raw water pump. For confidence of diminutive D130 engine, a small pair of pump pliers normally does the job. There are of course many tools which are not used very often but I keep aboard so we don't get caught short. There are various methods of cutting holes in wood or fiberglass. This set of rather rusty flat spade bits are good for cutting holes to pass wires or pipes through wood panels. These forstner bits are a bit worse for wear too but if sharp will cut a cleaner hole than a spade. When the hole is bigger than the spade can handle these hole saw sets take the strain right up to a 2.5 inch or 64mm hole. A set of files are always useful for all manner of emergency and general maintenance tasks and also get used in improvement and modification projects. 
whilst this heavy-duty impact driver is used for shifting stubborn fastenings of all sizes and types. We also have a set of taps and dies so we can re-thread any stripped or cross-threaded nuts and bolts. Although this is only a cheap HSS set, so might not be man enough to tackle the 316 stainless steel fixings used on the exterior deck hardware. Another must-have for us is spinnaker repair tape in the colour of our spinnaker. Sadly, this role has already been used. Over the years, I've collected quite an array of marine grade stainless steel fastenings and fixings of all kinds. That's just a couple of hose clips in case there's a hose clip required somewhere. I also have a penchant for buying mixed packs of nuts, bolts, washers, pins and screws, taking care to ensure that everything is in marine grade stainless steel to prevent corrosion. Another useful tool is this set of thread gauges. These have both diameter of bolt and thread options, so you can be sure that you have all the correct info when you're ordering spares. Now there's also a couple of honourable mentions of tools which are kept uh, in emergency positions and uh, one is this knife um, which is uh, right next to the companion way in case we need to cut a line, uh, a mooring line or a halyard that's got wrapped around somebody or something. Um, little shackle key, it's got a screwdriver attachment, bit of a nut thing and uh, serves as a as a sort of basic shackle key, it's not very good as a proper shackle key. And then on here we have a much more heavy duty shackle key which is ideal for taking um, pins out of D shackles. Under another cushion in another locker is another set of tools and spares. First we have a battery drill. This uses lithium iron cells that hold their charge well when not in use. There is of course a range of end fittings and decent quality drill bits. Buying a cheap set of bits won't last more than a few minutes when tackling marine fittings, so invest in something fairly decent. Another must have is a heat gun. When fitting pipes and hoses this cheap and cheerful tool is a game changer. This next one though is a bit of a luxury item. It's a hot knife rope cutter which on a sailing boat can keep your halyards and sheet ends in good fettle with the minimum of fuss. The label maker is another nice to have rather than an all out essential, but it definitely gets used for all manner of tasks around the boat and I wouldn't want to be without it. As with most relatively modern boats, Confidence uses automotive style crimp on terminal connections for almost all of its 12 volt wiring. Having an assortment box that has the full range of sizes and types is pretty essential spares if you want to keep your electrics going. In addition to the standard box, I also invested in a selection that had heat shrink sheaths. The idea being that it would make things neater and better protected. Though the reality is that I've been fairly disappointed with this particular set's performance. And of course, it should be obvious that you need a decent crimping tool if you want reliable connections. Not everything's a crimp, of course, and there might be occasions when a soldered joint is way more reliable. This soldering iron kit is not for very fine work, but we trade off precision for getting plenty of heat in those thicker cables that we find on board. Conversely, there are those moments when a quick and ready fix is needed just to get you home, so a good selection of chock block is a must on every boat. When running wires, it's important to make sure that they're secure. Loose wires on a bouncing boat will eventually chafe through, so a decent selection of zip ties is an essential consumable item to secure all electrical and piping throughout the vessel. Other types of fixing such as P-clips and other securing clips are also indispensable. Finally then, a handful of diameters and lengths of heat shrink tubing can finish off a connection, adding an outer layer of dependability to your electrical work. Now there was one locker I didn't open when I filmed this, and that one contains all my spare wire, different lengths and thicknesses of shore power, 12 volt and signal as well as coax. The other thing it contains is off-cut lengths of piping of all types, from sanitary toilet hose, spare fuel line, bilge water hose and fresh water pipe but I'm afraid you'll have to take my word for it as I forgot to point a camera at any of it. 
So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and thanks for watching.